<laughs> and, uh, but still, I will, I will say a, a, a few words. I think somebody would sh should take a pictures of the blackboard because I sh otherwise I cannot submit slides, you know. So. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Forget it. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but still, I will start in, in the beginning trying to explain a, a little bit some features of uh, Ramsey classes. And of course, the attempt is to somehow to understand them more and try to try to characterize them. And uh, but I think this for that uh, one, uh, it's a complex notion. I mean, in, in combinatorics, it's certainly one of the most complete uh, complex notions. And uh, and somehow the uh, the what I like to say, a sexual understanding you know, of the Ramsey classes is very complicated. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the. Uh, what is a definition? Everybody knows it, but let me, uh, so what is a Ramsey, a finite Ramsey theorem? <coughs> it's a, we are in the logic, uh, logic meeting, so we can use quantifiers, you know, for every P, for every K, for every N. There exists, uh, no, and uh, there exists uh, some number N, and we, of course, write it as a Ramsey number PKN, such that if we take any, any set which is, uh, which is uh, say, x, which is uh, bigger than, than uh, uh, this uh, r p k n, and then, then uh, this uh, cardinality x, I'm writing it wrongly, is uh, rowing n p k, yeah. or x is rowing p. And that, of course, one can uh, write uh, uh, in, the, in the language of uh, for every k, this is still natural numbers, and for every b, uh, there, uh, there exists some n, uh, such that if you take a, if you take a c, which is uh, bigger than this, uh, some say r this time, like uh, then then c arose, b a k, and that uh, so this is some Ramsey type. A statement for uh, for some not specified uh, structures, and by by this we, we this has a usual usual meaning. This is a this is a, a funny notation which goes back to I think uh, which go back to Rado, and uh, and which uh, which of course means that if you take a C over A and you split it into two parts, then there exists a B B prime from C to B. Such that B prime, B prime over A, is in subset of one part of the of the partition for two, and this is for K. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, the list of these theorems is uh, is uh, which which have this feature is actually quite small, right? It's uh, containing this Ramsey theorem and uh, and. Uh, it contains uh, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this uh, parameter set theorem, mm. and uh, which uh, which contains, but that was realized much later, uh, which contains a dual Ramsey theorem, um, and it contains a various three theorems, uh, mm. and that's almost uh, almost the end of the uh, end of the end of the list. And I think this is, uh, this is actually a uh, uh, reason for it, is actually the formulation of it. And where is this singular formulation, which is uh, usually not stressed uh, these days? And this is, this is here, right? <coughs> yes. We want that every big object has, uh, has the property. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if this is cardinality or this is some kind of dimension. Or, or rank, you know, rank of the C. So we want what we want. If the object has a high dimension, then it's a, it's a, then it is Ramsey in a, in a, in a usual sense. Now, of course, I mean you can, uh, I mean you can every every formulation of Ramsey can be uh, modified to it. You just take some cofinal sequence of universal objects which are containing containing something. And uh, and then uh, then you get the theorem like that, 
But that's a cheating, because this is not how you prove it, actually. So this is, uh, this is I mean, you somehow typically, you are proving it by, by induction, by, uh, by complicated induction on these parameters, and you are stepping from one step to another uh, by, dimen uh, uh, by dimension. And in this way, you, you, you have to employ uh, some kind of, uh, uh, if that should work, then somehow the, the class should be somehow narrow and really, really, really quantified very well, or stratified, not quantified, stratified very well, very well, very well by, by this dimension. And that was, people tried to understand it. One of them was very early. It was uh, uh, the Klaus Lev, and he was uh, coming with this, what he called the Pascal theory, which is uh, Pascal theory in terms of like generalizing Pascal triangle or Pascal identity for binomial coefficients. And, uh, and we have seen in earlier this week a uh, nice axiomatization of it, uh, or a nice effort for axiomatization by, by Slavic when he was speaking about this norm. <laughs> Closure, whatever spaces. <coughs> then, and this sort of ca carries uh, uh, this, and that may be the reason. But uh, I mean, people, this was uh, Ramsey Torrey's uh, favorite uh, uh, favorite uh, uh, object of study from the early beginning. This is really nice to say that uh, when it was uh, found, it instantly generated, uh, generated attention. You know, there's a very early paper by Skolem, which is containing actually the proof of Ramsey theorem, which is, which is sort of almost canonical from the proof of Ramsey is, uh, is not, so, uh, not, uh, not so elegant. I mean, of course, it instantly generated attention of, of Erdes and uh, Sekeres. And, uh, so, so, I mean, it was, it was in, in the very early, it has as well very sound, uh, very sound uh, motivation, yeah. <coughs> but uh, despite of the effort, I mean, the list was somehow fine that, and the uh, reason for it is is that the, this that we want to have it here is a quantifier, right, for every x, yeah, and and uh, and then in a, of course on the as people say on the shoulders of giants, or the are promoted by questions, uh, but important que or difficult question of particular Ferdish and. Uh, uh, people change the quantifiers, right? And that happened around 70, and, and that was, uh, uh, that was uh, due to lab, uh, and we as well did it with Rödel, yeah? And, and it, it was, we just changed it to the existence, yeah. <coughs> yeah. So that, then the theorem, they should be, and that is how we understand the Ramsey class, right? So for every A and for every K, and we don't need this k, I mean k is equal to 2, and for every b, <coughs> there exists uh, just some object c, so that c arose. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how we, how we understand it uh, now. And that, of course, opened the gate of the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the study just uh, by insisting that uh, there exists one, and of course, then there are in the all situation infinitely many, and you can study them what they are. But certainly, I mean, this opened the gate because because this opened it for the structures which are which are uh, genuinely not linear, right? I mean, this is I mean, if you really are proving this for uh, uh, and you are uh, proving it by induction, then you again you deal with uh, class C, which somehow is very well very well graded. By the, by the dimension, right? It's almost like a chain. In fact, it is a chain. Right? In Ramsey theory, it's a chain, a chain of complete graphs. In the, in the, in the vector space, it's a chain of the dimension, uh, the dimension over, over fixed. Uh, so, so in a way, but uh, if, you, if you work with a class which is, uh, which is uh, like a graphs, or which is, uh, which, uh, or colored, colored, uh, or I mean, colored, uh, uh, colored vector spaces, colored, uh, uh, colored uh, complete graphs, I mean, which are graphs, and then you get incomparable elements everywhere. And uh, somehow this, uh, this condition, I, I said you can, of course, uh, find some universe of objects and quantify it over it, but this is not how you prove it. And this is, in fact, misleading. It's just a formulation. Right? So that, uh, that, uh, that opened, uh, uh, that changed the... Uh, uh, situation, and I think this is a right, right, uh, right definition. 
And then it appeared that there are many of the of these uh, of these Ramsey classes. Yeah, it's uh, if you if you are satisfied with uh, with this uh, <coughs> with this weakening, it's a weaker uh, notion. Then 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 uh, there are, there are many, and uh, and this is what uh, what we what we what we study what we study now. Right, and uh, so I call sometimes these uh, like a classical or uh, classical, and. Uh, in this sense, uh, Slavik was speaking about pure, right? Uh, I mean, he said, uh, so I even have somewhere, somewhere else, uh, basic, actually, basic, yes. So basic. Yeah. Well, it's uh, basic is a good word, because you use them as the starting point, and to you then, I mean, these, uh, these theorems are usually uh, uh, not uh, going from the scratch. They are somehow improving. Uh, and so actually you are usually starting with something like it, and then you are improving it. Yeah. <coughs> so in a way, this is the uh, last comment on it. I, I apologize that uh, for many of you are very familiar with it, but still I think it's, uh, there is uh, something to say. I mean, these actually the theorems, and all of them, I mean, you can really prove from scratch by iterating pigeonholes. Well, because these theorems are based on the pigeonhole too, they can as well prove them by iterating a pigeonhole. But it is somehow less, less uh, canonized, and uh, and it's uh, the somehow the connection is uh, is uh, uh, somehow much more uh, loose. And I don't think one should say that they are proved by iterating a pigeonhole. But on the other hand side, I mean, on the other hand side, this. Uh, did I ever tell you about this arrow? I mean, when we started to work with it, uh, we were uh, somehow uh, origin of the of this uh, uh, of this uh, concept was a category theory. Actually, it was not a model theory since now, but it was a category theory, and and we somehow had a feeling that this is a stupid notation. I mean, we were uh, young young kids, so we were uh, somehow thinking that now we have a right to change uh, every every arrow which exists, you know, and we suggested to to denote it by B arrow C uh, A K, right? In this way. And that is really like a, a nice, it composes, you know, so you can compose it, so D and so the K prime, you know, and then you know that here is a, a and a K times K prime, you know, so it's, it's a pretty, you know. So. And, uh, and, and when we did so, then we submitted our first uh, uh, papers, and we got a re reaction uh, from anonymous referees, but as well by openly by, by concrete people, that this is a very nice paper, that it uh, should be definitely published, but, but under condition of it that we reverse the error. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and I was really sort of... Uh, Dictate, but I mean, if you are, I you know, 27, you are still a rebel, and you know, uh, so <laughs> rebellious. And so we, <laughs> but it was really funny that it created, uh, and it was really schisma, which uh, somehow then Erdes tried to solve, that he, he, de, he, he, he suggested, and there is a paper on it, that he, one should denote it by, well, if this, if the nations through air hurdle are such a idiots which which want us, so they suggested this, you know. That's <laughs> 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 so, like, so, like a compromise, you know. So, <laughs> so, that that doesn't have a meaning at all already. <laughs> so, so it's, can put that it's just a blap, you know. So, and, and we bravely published the paper about this. Uh, about the Ramsey number for Ram, Ramsey theorem for KK free graphs actually contains this uh, was, uh, this this arrow and and then we gave up of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I say it's a really it was mathematics is beautiful that just uh, just the direction of an arrow can create you know furore you know so that. <laughs> So they were, uh, uh, so this is like a pigeonhole, yeah. But it's uh, good to say, in fact, this is always a pigeonhole, right? 
I mean, it's a, you one can re reformulate it. I mean, it's a, that uh, this statement, <laughs> no matter which direction the arrow goes, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's equivalent to the pigeonhole statement, right? It is equivalent that the chromatic number of the certain, certain hypergraph is bigger than k. And, uh, and uh, what is this hypergraph? It's very explicit hypergraph. It's, uh, the x is, uh, s is uh, c uh, over k, uh, <coughs> and m is the family of uh, b prime over a, such that uh, b prime is, is in c over b. And uh, the chromatic number is a pigeonhole. This is just a, uh, it's a, it's a, so this is some hypergraph. It has points. The points are a little complicated. I mean, the points are some uh, copies of A into, into C. So this is one copy of A, and there is another copy of A, you know, so A1 and A2. And the edges, or the hyper edges, these are these B2, say, these are all copies which are filling some copy, copy of B, no, B prime. <coughs> and they, and uh, the chromatic number is that if you, if you, it's a, it's a pigeonhole. It's a, this is this indecomposability, which was yesterday in the Stevo, Stevo lecture. If you split it into arbitrarily into k parts, like here in two, then there exists one copy which is sitting on one side entirely. So there exists one, one B prime, so that all copies of the, of the B, uh, A in B. And, and <coughs> now the, this is a pigeonhole, right? It's the same, same schema. And I mean, you don't have to speak about the high complex A, high complex B. It's just the theorem about the chromatic number. It's just a comparison of the, of the, of the definition. Yeah. Now the, this is this is the translation, which is somehow seemingly easy. It's, uh, it's completely useless, right? I mean, so <laughs> it doesn't have uh, any, 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 it's not of any use. Actually, this is not true, and I want to show it in a, in a second. I mean, the, where is the problem? But the problem is, well, this is a difficult thing, right? Uh, it's a chromatic number big is difficult thing by itself. I mean, so that's a, if you put here on some condition on it, then you, you are, you, it's a, uh, of course, I mean, this, if it is complete gravity, this is just a pigeonhole, but if you don't want something, then it's, a, and this is highly structured, right? So this is, this is not some set, it's a special set, which all copies of A into C, and this is, again, induced by, by the subobject. So it's highly, highly, uh, highly special, and somehow the way that you would prove it by axiomatizing this and then producing, producing, uh, producing C, so that this would hold. This is simply not a, not a, not a successful strategy so far, right? And uh, but still, it has uh, it has certain uh, certain implication that it is good uh, good to know. And uh, and for example, so I will list uh, four of them. Four of them, yeah. The first, it is sometimes useful, uh, for example, for A equal to 1. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, the, the induction in this Ram, Ramsey class, it often goes by, by double induction. It goes by first by induction on A, uh, where, where you start with, uh, with uh, one point. And then you assume that it is four small, and then you do for a fixed A, you proceed by induction uh, by induction on B. So this is uh, this is, uh, and then uh, you, you sometimes <laughs> speak about the, if it is for X A, so you speak about the A Ramsey property. Yeah, Ramsey. <coughs> if the theorem holds for for A, so I mean this is uh, not misleading uh, case. I mean this is. <coughs> and uh, that's a non-trivial question, even even for uh, for a equal to one. But then, uh, then actually, you can really use this 
uh, this, uh, this statement. Because if you take, uh, if you take uh, xm as it is here, the <coughs> arbitrary system which has a bigger than k, they can, you can turn it, for, you can turn to xm to, to, the, uh, to the object c by, by, by a replacement or placement, 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 <coughs> uh, placement uh, construction. And namely, I just uh, draw the picture. Here is the XM. It's a correct picture, right? So it, uh, the XM looks like this. I mean, so it's a <coughs> and uh, and if what you do, you take your favorite B, <coughs> and you put it and you. You put it injectively on, in some way, on, on every, on every, on every, on every set. And and if this M has, for example, property that M inter uh, that uh, that it is, uh, uh, if the if you have a two elements of M a script M, then they intersect in at most one point. Then these copies will not interfere. I mean, they will only touch in vertices. And so you automatically, from, from this, you get that you get a copy which is monochromatic of this. And, uh, and this trick, I mean, which is, uh, which is uh, 40 year old, I mean, will prove to be very useful. I mean, people were proving him in this case. It's a, this is sometimes called Folkman, Folkman theorem. Uh, very proving it, uh, 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 prove it in explicitly in, uh, in uh, some co concrete, in, uh, in elaborated construction. This is, uh, this is, this is construction is uh, somehow easier. It's slightly misleading uh, because this condition, together with this condition, is a non-trivial condition, right? I mean, you f if you want to construct a system of cape system of say uh, ten tuples which has chromatic number bigger than k, so that they are intersecting in a force minus one point. This is a non-trivial thing. In fact, this is, as far as I know, uh, essentially the only, only mistake which Erdesh ever did, you know. So, <coughs> so uh, uh, only uh, that he really deeply conjectured something wrong, you know. Because, and let me explain it. I mean, they, they say, uh, uh, if you have a, uh, I, I'm illustrating that these two conditions are non-trivial together. Right? So, why well, they are non-trivial? Right? Because if you have this xm, <coughs> so this is x and m, you can turn it to the bipartite graph, which is x, and, and you put here m, m in m, and you put epsilon here. Right? You take incidence by part of the graph. Now this graph will have this condition that they intersect in at most one point. If I don't leave, this guy doesn't have a rectangles. No. Because if you have a two edges which intersect in two points, then you have them here is M, here is M prime, this is M, this is M prime, and you get a rectangle like this, right? And uh, and uh, and that holds another way too. So if if they intersect in at most one point, the graph has no rectangle. Right? Now the there is uh, one of the beautiful results of Erdős and Heinel is that uh, that if the if the graph has chromatic number, it's infinite. If the graph has a chromatic number continuum, then then G contains a rectangle. That's uh, that you cannot get high chromatic graphs without. Uh, this is uh, this is showing that this famous result of Herdesh, the that there are high chromatic graphs without short cycles, without rectangles, is a strictly finite theorem. If you in the full generality for the high chromatic number, it it simply it simply it simply doesn't hold. Now the Herdesh was, uh, of course, he knew very well uh, connections like that, you know. And it prompted him that maybe that actually if the if you take a triple system uh, <coughs> or maybe uh, 
it's bigger than K, some, uh, some kappa. Yeah. From that follows that uh, Xm uh, or M, M contains, contains two sets, two hyper, hyper edges which intersect in at, at least two points. Yeah. Just uh, getting uh, analogy. analogy. Yeah. It looks plausible. This is this, this really, these uh, graphs are very. It's, uh, this is sometimes called almost disjoint on linear, linear uh, hypergraphs, uh, like lines. Uh, lines have the property, right? So, uh, uh, so this uh, pre-geometry, uh, and uh, so the, this, uh, so the, this connection uh, look like that this will carry over in this. Uh, oh, this is deeply wrong. I mean, this thing. I mean, as uh, he realized. Uh, I mean, just a few years later in the paper with Bruce, Bruce Rocher, which is actually, again, Ramsey theorem, which is uh, good to know. If you take uh, x is, which is this proof, in fact, this connection. So uh, if, you take, uh, if you take some large set, kappa over choose 2 will be x, and uh, m will be, it will be all the triangles in it. So all the three pairs which form a triangle, yeah. Then this is a three uniform. Every 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 system every every set in the system has a three points, namely three edges of the triangle. And if you take a two such sets, right? So you take one triangle, so three edges, and you take another triangle. So well, the, these are two disjoint sets, right? Because you are speaking about pairs, right? But these are pairs, so they are disjoint. If the triangles are disjoint, they are just disjoint too. But what the two triangles may have a, at most one edge together, right? So the, 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 it is almost disjoint. Yeah. And uh, because there is a transfinite Ramsey theorem, you, he, knows, uh, he knows that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that this, is, this, is, this, is, this is true. So I mean, this is, a non this is illustrating this is a non-trivial non -trivial condition, uh, putting, pu uh, putting, putting things together, yeah. Now there is, of course, another thing which is uh, which is uh, coming once you formulate it in terms of chromatic number. I mean, you you get for free compactness, right? <coughs> Logical compactness. Yes. Yes. <coughs> But I will not speak about this at all. But I mean, this is exemplified very clearly. It's, uh, but they, this uh, there is even more modern twist for, for, for it. I mean, you get, uh, mind you, this this first result, it's, it has a lot of freedom, right? You have n not. Uh, uh, not uh, the theorem just for C, but uh, you, for example, and that's uh, in the same here, in the line which it was investigated. You take F is uh, is a finite set set of uh, of uh, uh, two connected graphs. So for example, cycles. Yeah. You take a finite set of uh, two connected graphs, and you and you consider. You consider, you consider four per f, in the sense that uh, this f, this is uh, this is monomorphisms. I mean, it's a non necessarily not embedding so monomorphism. It's a natural in this setting class of all graphs or structures, uh, two connected structures. I mean, so uh, which uh, which don't contain any member of the f as a as a subgraph as a substructures. Then this uh, has. Uh, has this uh, a a Ramsey for or one point one point 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 Ramsey Ramsey property because you do, you then you 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 then generalize it you know, from this to something which doesn't contain cycles in the copies uh, cycles in this uh, this M doesn't have a, uh, short cycles and uh, so this F any of this F cannot appear. Uh, cannot appear there, yeah. and uh, so this is a very robust uh, uh, construction, which is uh, giving at the same time you can prove many things, and uh, and this is actually related to, and that's good to say, and it has a modern to, to the ordering property. Hmm. Hmm. And 
And what's ordering property? It looks like that it doesn't have uh, as well many people hold. Uh, no it, but I mean, uh, you, you say uh, it has uh, uh, many forms, somehow more localized form, but you can say it as follows that, uh, uh, say, for every B there exists a C. Uh, so that, so that if you take, uh, if you take uh, uh, for, uh, I will write it in the words, so that, so that uh, for every, every linear orderings, orderings, orderings of uh, B and uh, C, yeah, <coughs> uh, holds uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, for every linear holds that, uh, C uh, contains contains uh, monotone, monotone in monotone sense. So it's a sub uh, sub object which is uh, where the which is monotone where the injection is a, is a, a monotone function. A monotone contain monotone sub object sub object B uh, or isomorphic 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 to B and. <coughs> That's a that's a non-trivial uh, statement, which is as well related to chromatic number. And it, traditionally, it was proved from Ramsey theorem or from some uh, from uh, from Ramsey statement because somehow it's a weaker notion because it somehow you can say you can order the C, for example, in some arbitrary way, and then you can you can partition uh, edges uh, according to whether they go this way or this way in this. Uh, uh, and uh, and if you know that the C C is Ramsey in a good sense, then you get uh, either copy monotone this way or monotone back way. So you you start with uh, with taking both sides and, uh, and and you have it. Yeah. So it seems that it is actually related to Ramsey. It's not actually. So it's a much weaker statement. And we and the reason for it that we have uh, for for this uh, ordering property, we have again the same thing. We have that uh, for uh, for p m. F, uh, F ordering property. Uh, and we have absolutely nothing similar for, 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 uh, for, uh, for, uh, for Ramsey classes. I mean, so in fact, in, in fact, Ramsey classes, even we know that it cannot be in this uh, situation. Yeah. And, uh, and why it is uh, that I can. It's actually going to. I will now show Catherine that I as well can do, can do it. At least so I, I can try. <laughs> Just a modest try, you know. So, uh, yeah. And what you can, what you can do, and uh, and this is uh, uh, this is little little known uh, uh, trick. Actually, <coughs> um, uh, take a XM, yeah. <coughs> and uh, I already suggested to you that we have this almost disjoint property that they intersect in one. I mean, I said that you may, uh, you may demand that they don't have a, uh, uh, they don't have a, uh, a short, uh, uh, they don't have a some cycle. So, so, so the theorem, uh, which is a sort of standard uh, probabilistic proof, and uh, I mean, although it was never stated in this way, I think it would be right to, uh, to, to suggest it to the to to, uh, to uh, assign it to to Erdesh. so there exists XM which which doesn't doesn't have a, or contain cycles cycles of lengths uh, lengths uh, less or equal to L L is fixed say 50 you know, actually if it is even mo much more modest say six in this uh, quite complicated theorem, which doesn't have a cycle of length n and which has a high chromatic number. This is actually a dash theorem. 
but uh, we, we don't want it. I mean, this theorem speaks about the chromatic number. Actually, the, uh, the connection is, uh, is controlled just by cardinality. And, and the size of m is, uh, is or bigger than the size of x to 1 plus epsilon. Yeah. So I mean, then the, uh, for every l, there exists epsilon. In fact, this epsilon can be taken as 1 over 2 l. Yeah. Yeah, it's like that this this whole yeah. mind you this is this is uh, this is deep result and uh, there is no construction known for for such a system i mean uh, 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 that can be illustrated look here is a huge set as big as you want yeah <coughs> it's a countable theorem but as well it's asymptotic theorem so and uh, and so it's a huge set and you want to here are oh uh, I said, and uh, uh, there should be as well for every p, say, so that m is, uh, uh, is a system of p-tuples. m is in m, so that uh, m is a p points. Yeah. <coughs> otherwise, you, uh, otherwise, yeah. So, uh, so you, uh, you take, uh, you, you, t you are taking p-tuples here. And, uh, and you want uh, so that they don't close somehow what is a cycle. Cycle is simply this thing which I'm drawing. Cycle is uh, uh, set, point, set, point, set, point. Right? So that, and so that all of them are distinct that can, be, that can be set in this way. So for example, this is a two cycle, right? Uh, point, set, point, set, point, set. Yeah, so. <coughs> and uh, so if you, uh, you want uh, you want to you want to avoid this thing, right? Well, this this looks like that you it's best to take it disjointly and and then to take from time to time to take something across, you know. But it's a huge small number, right? So this is almost linear. So actually, it's not trivial to get it super linear. This uh, this uh, and here we you are claiming that it's this, uh, it's a it's a bigger by even by uh, in the exponent, uh, so that it's, it's a much, a much, 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 much bigger, and uh, and this has a corollary. This from this you get, you get, you get, you get this, you get this result, and this result, I mean, you can get by by the same trick by the what we call the random placement, a random placement. Random placement uh, construction. Yeah. <coughs> now, for example, take a take a system of pay tuples. Take a system of five tuples. <coughs> so five tuples, and uh, which has this property, yeah, which is so that it is the yeah, end to the and what I'm saying, what is the random placement? So this is some fixed m, xm. Yeah. <coughs> Doesn't have a short side. Yeah. Now I put, so this has always five points, mm. and I put completely randomly, independently, because these are intersecting. They don't have a, a short cycle, so l is at least at least three, right? So there are no no two which would intersect. So I can put here pentagon. And here I can put again pentagon. <coughs> Imagine that the whole thing is ordered somehow in some way. So I mean, I'm just beginning how they are putting them. I put it in all possible ways. And they are independent. Yeah? These, these, uh, these things are uh, mutual. <laughs> they don't influence each other. So, so I'm getting a uh, uh, graph. Uh, I'm getting many graphs. How many graphs do I get? I get a. Uh, I get uh, how many are positions, there are some A positions, how to put the pentagon there, which is, uh, which is some, uh, some uh, five factorial divided by automorphisms of pentagon. Uh, how many? Ten. Yeah. So, so something like it. Yeah. <coughs> so there are so many ways how to put, put, uh, put, uh, put a pentagon on the, on the five points. So I have, I have A to the 
to the uh, x is n, n to 1 plus epsilon in the exponent type. Uh, graphs which I get. Yeah. And uh, this is a huge number, right? So that's a double exponential, double exponential number. So that's a whole trick, actually. That this is a, this is so huge, huge number that now I count how many how many graphs in it are those which don't contain some particular some particular position of pentagon. For example, I would like to get I would like to get the pentagon in this way, right? So of course, I mean there are many many graphs which uh, I can, for example, put there always uh, with respect to some, or they, they, I can put there something, something else. So uh, I can put it in different, different position. But how many are these, uh, those which are in best position? And, and this is, this is uh, well, the one position is forbidden. So it's a minus one. Yeah. And then there is a lin some linear por ordering down. This is n factorial, another huge number, times n to one plus epsilon. Yeah. Yeah, but this is. This is much smaller, right? Exactly because this is huge. This is huge. So I mean, it means that there exists one, one, one location, uh, one insertion, one this uh, random placement condition, so that no matter of which ordering you take, no matter which ordering you take, there will be always a monotone bar. It's a that's a trick which uh, you get. Uh, in this way, in fact, you get this high chromatic graph without short cycles in an easy way because it's exactly the same argument. You instead of placing it there, you just put there an edge, for example, <coughs> and you get the high chromatic graph. <laughs> and, uh, we called it. Uh, it's a trick with which we had uh, is with Rödel in. You know, I think it's a seventy-nine. It's a and. Uh, and it, it was, it's actually actual, actually there's a recent paper, they was rediscovered uh, by, by uh, Angel, Kechris, and Lyons, the, exactly the same thing, and they, they modify it in a very nice way, and they showed that, uh, that uh, and that's a, that's a easy uh, st uh, probabilistic uh, analysis of the construction, that in fact, there exists a graph with such a way that all the orderings you get with nearly with the same prob prob probability. So the, all the orderings, all orderings, orderings <coughs> of of C five with the same probability, with almost with up to the, the same probability. Oh. Okay, I have to end this. So I mean, you get, you get, roughly, uh, uh, you, uh, it's better to phrase it in terms of embedding, not in terms of the, uh, of the subgraph, so that you wouldn't get, you would get rid of these automorphisms uh, there. And so basically, you, you get every ordering uh, has a has a monotone embedding into approximately one over uh, five factorial, uh, fa fa factorial. Uh, one of the five factorial of these islands will be ordered, uh, ordered in a in a in a in a f fixed uh, f fixed ordering. So they will be, uh, and the, the, so it will be one ordering. The another ordering will be as well in this. So there exists a graph that, uh, no matter how you order it, uh, it it gets a, it gets all the orderings are almost the same. Actually, we can. I mean, this is a, a part. This is a very nice. They use it for. Uh, Unique ergodic measures uh, or the, uh, unique er ergodicity, and uh, uh, and uh, you can do it in weighted way. You can do it in weighted way so that you you prescribe uh, no, so that there is a graph which which get uh, which get uh, which get uh, orderings in some uh, in some prescribed weighting. Uh, if you know something about the ordering, so this is leading to a nice notion. Let me just uh, say it, uh, say it uh, in the in the way uh, in this way. So if you have an ordering, this is uh, think of it as permutation, right? And and you can define a k statistics uh, statistics 
statistics of, of a pi. Uh, it's a k statistics of a pi is a, is a number of k tuples. Uh, uh, so I mean, what you do, you 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 fix the permutations p1, p2, up to pk factorial. Uh, so this is some enumeration of all permutations, and uh, and k statistics is how many how many k tuples k tuples are order like p1, how many k tuples are order like p2. So you just take that probably. Uh, I am sure that it was, it appeared somewhere that uh, people studied, studied this. So I mean, you take the uh, number of k tuples, tuples, which, which where the uh, where the p uh, k tuples say i, <laughs> p over a is isomorphic to p i. Yeah. <coughs> so this is some k statistics, uh, k statistics of it, and. And, uh, and if you, one of the results which you can get is a master theorem which is implying this uniform, uh, u uniform, uh, uh, u uniform distribution, you may get arbitrary distribution for every basically stochastic, uh, stochastic vector. If, I, if you take the vector AI, which is, uh, which is summing positive uh, or no non-negative uh, real numbers, so that which is uh, summing to one, then actually you can, uh, you can basically get, uh, you can compute, uh, compute which, uh, uh, if you know that you take ordering which has given statistics, uh, what, uh, you, may, you may get uh, uh, exact, uh, exact uh, uh, number of tuples which are, uh, or approximately exact number of tuples which are ordered in, in, a, in, a, in proper way. Particularly, you can get, and which is, uh, Actually, very, ni uh, very nice, and we call it sort of sparsification lemma. You, you may, if you know this case statistics, there exists a system of k tuples which is very sparse, and uh, and the uh, and the distribution of the orderings of the k tuples of your k tuples, which are sparse, is the same as distribution of the pi. Yeah, so that's. Uh, so I mean, if if you know that they are, uh, they, they are the pi has a majority of uh, p one and, and p two, and the rest are in the in the small one, then you know that it will de be demonstrated on this sparse system 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 of uh, of sets. I think this is uh, um, this may uh, may still this is uh, very uh, recent and it's not not yet, not yet published. We did it with Red Lasse. Uh, we were inspired by the uh, Angel Kechris and Lyons uh, paper, which is as well very recent. I don't think it's yet published. Is it published already? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> so, uh, so, so, so my, and then actually, this is uh, the last remark. So, it was, I said I will say four. Last remark, and that I want to say, I, well, I'm just uh, talking and. Uh, I will end up when there will be when the our president will <laughs> stop stop me. Yeah, so yeah. And uh, the last remark is it is uh, it's actually the amalgamation. Yeah. Where is that coming from? Yeah. Uh, it's actually a consequence of this connection, of this uh, of this uh, of this system, of this pigeonhole reformulation of Ramsey classes. And somehow this system, system of uh, uh, C over A and, uh, and uh, this system of B prime over A, uh, which was there, I sometimes they know it, ABC. Yeah, that's uh, ABC system. So. <coughs> so, this, uh, so we, we know that Ramsey property it's equivalent to the chromatic number for just shorthand. I mean, I'm not insisting that we should denote it that way, but uh, I just want to make it brief. We know that it is equivalent. Ramsey, Ramsey class is equivalent to a statement that this is bigger than k, yeah. bigger than 2. Yeah. For every a, b, there exists c. <coughs> what, what address we? 
No, nothing, right? So, I mean, this is the only thing what we know, right? So this is, this is equivalent of a condition. So we can now, uh, now try to think what, uh, what this means, but this is, this is exactly the difficulty and difficulty in characterizing Ramsey classes that we know, we know, we know just this. From what follows from it? Well, there is uh, one thing which follows from it. And it's an it's a easy statement, but it's a fundamental statement. From this follows that there exists, so let me write it as, uh, the, if the chromatic number of xm is bigger than 2, from that follows that there exists m, generally, it may be graphs, m and m prime, such that in the system m, such that m intersection m prime has to be, has to be a 1, exactly 1. Yeah. So if you, have a, if, you have a, if you have a system of k tuples, and you know that any two of them intersected at, at most two points, you know that the chromatic number cannot be big. I mean, and that's expectable because then they always intersect in two points, so you can always color it in such a way that, that you just interchange the two, uh, two colors. It has to have the, there has to be two, two, two systems which intersect in one. The proof is easy, right? Take, a, take the system, x. Here is a full proof. I mean, take the system. Take the, take the coloring, minimal coloring, so we say with three, the three. Now, modify it a little bit, that you, so you have a, this doesn't contain any edge, this doesn't contain any edge, this doesn't contain any edge. So enlarge it, so make it maximum, this one. So take a maximum set which doesn't contain any edge, right? So let's uh, modify it, that may be. And then in the rest, modify this. Yeah. <coughs> so we modify it. So we can assume that these are maximum. This is maximum. This is then maximum in the rest. Right? Something has to remain right? at the last point. But this was maximum. So there exists an edge which is, which is contained in this way. And this was maximum in the rest. And so there has to be edge which is, which is in this way. So we found it. Yeah. We found a point. We found x. So that, uh, so that they they intersect only, only in x. And that's amalgamation. Right? If you then go back, that's amalgamation. That's uh, exactly the amalgamation. So it's a little bit more. So it's, uh, so it's saying that now we know what are the m's, what are these other systems. So we know that there exists b, right? And there exists another b, yeah? <coughs> and then uh, they intersect only in one a. Yeah. <coughs> There's no other a which would be in the intersection. Maybe other points, which, which may be not in, in A. I mean, they, we don't know that uh, it may be, it's, a, it's somehow semi-strong, uh, weak, weak, strong amalgamation, because we don't know that whether there is uh, something in between. And of course, overlap may be higher. I mean, higher in terms of edges, which somehow don't create another, 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 another A. And, uh, and if it is, uh, as it is, you know, this Ramsey class always is uh, with some given ordering. So we have, uh, we have some given ordering here. So we have A, and we, we just represent by the ordering uh, given embedding. And so this is really exactly, exactly, it uh, can be elaborated to exactly to, to So we have amalgamation. And that, that of course, is amalgamation is, uh, is uh, close to, or it's uh, one of the, in every lecture here is, uh, is amalgamation, right? So so that's, uh, that's of course uh, very, very, very close to, 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 uh, to the topic of, of, this, of, this, of this workshop. And uh, so the characterization which uh, one, would, uh, one, one could attempt is, uh, is uh, so you, take a, you take a class, what is the situation I'm copying the uh, picture of schema from from <laughs> from a paper about ten years ago. So we have a class, right? And we would like to know whether it's a Ramsey class, or, whether, or we would like to uh, we just speculate. <laughs> what the, so we know that it has some amalgamation, right? Hmm. Well, it, if it has some amalgamation, then then we know we we know it's leading to some. Uh, countable homogeneous, ultra homogeneous. Uh, 
and uh, and uh, and in, maybe we are done, right? We just look into favorite Greg's list, you know, and just uh, just uh, check, you know, that uh, that this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, Ramsey class. Well, it doesn't work that way, right? I mean, always it works sometimes that way. Uh, for example, it. Uh, well, it, it doesn't almost never works that way, but <laughs> so so. But if it's true, you know, we we say or the generic. Uh, you know, uh, so we have some. Uh, we know a little more. So it's a special generic. Uh, we have to add something to it. We have to, and in both ways, we, uh, and I, I think this is a key, here is the key, uh, key, uh, key step. I mean, because what does it mean that what is, what is, what, if you have a Ramsey class and it's leading to ultra homage, what, what more you know? You know something more, I believe. And it's, uh, it's, it's not yet discovered, actually. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, related to, uh, I wrote it somewhere, it's related to stability a little bit, I mean, or some weak stability. I mean, so it's uh, uh, you. You have to be able to to create. It's not just a tree amalgamation of the of the things. So you have to wrap it wrap it up. You know. So it's a, but it's a special generic, and, and in some cases you have to add something. Yeah, you have to do what's uh, what we call lift, or you have to do expansion. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe you return to, or, it, or you get you get uh, you, you get you get back with this extra. Extra, uh, and that, that uh, I mean, uh, that uh, I mean, people follow this uh, by by now, and to to to, uh, to try to uh, to characterize or uh, something. Uh, and they say, uh, of course, one can conjecture that it can always do it. I mean, so that's uh, can always add something to it, and you get uh, and people characterizing Manuel and uh, one day, uh, I mean, specifically ask uh, these questions. I mean, they. If you view some, uh, and that of course is possible, maybe to find some uh, general uh, general characterization that every uh, ultra homogeneous has a, uh, has a lift uh, and uh, and related to some some uh, some some structural uh, aspects in the same way as uh, as uh, 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 best of Todorcevich related Ramsey classes to some uh, to extreme extreme amenability, for example. So that is, uh, but I mean, if you speak about the concrete, concrete uh, classes, I mean, as, uh, this is my approach. If you speak about the concrete classes, you're facing huge difficulties to prove that certain, certain classes, Ramsey. And let me state, uh, I mean, so that I would finish. I said uh, in the abstract that I will state uh, three, uh, three somehow new. So let me say three samples of of uh, of uh, theorems or two samples of the theorems which. Uh, uh, which, uh, which, uh, uh, which by attempting to prove, and I'm happy, very happy to be here at the Hausdorff Institute because where I, where I would find uh, three weeks free with three weeks to work with Hubička, for example, so that uh, if uh, in Prague I couldn't find those three weeks, but in in Bonn somehow it's. Uh, it's a more friendly city, probably. <laughs> but one of the things is that the telephone doesn't work. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so the, uh, let me say the, uh, say the following. So that if you take a, uh, I mean, do I have a three minutes? Yeah, okay, just good. So just three minutes, yes. Yeah. So there are two theorems in three minutes. I mean, so the first one motivation <laughs> will be now. If you <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. If you take a, so m many of these things are that you are considering classes of four, four pf, yeah. and uh, and that you as well consider in the for uh, the was principal concept in the in the in the Greek uh, lecture. But uh, he was saying monomorphism, that we consider homomorphism. I mean, we forbid, uh, we for, forbid homomorphism. And then there is a very general theorem that if f is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, are the connected graphs, 
and that's a sort of a technical assumption. I mean that uh, you would. Uh, so, uh, but if you uh, if uh, if uh, if it's any finite family, finite family, <coughs> then the form uh, for H F uh, is not Ramsey that we know actually. That's uh, but uh, has a expa has a Ramsey expansion. And uh, and that is actually very well based in the in the investigation uh, uh, of uh, of uh, ultra homogeneous or omega categorical uh, uh, structures and and uh, in a way it is a generalization what uh, what uh, Cherlin Shellach she uh, 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 proved I, because I have only three minutes I cannot put all the names explicitly. <laughs> so it's, uh, so the, uh, I have only one minute or a little. So uh, Cherla and Shelley, she, uh, proved, they, they, they proved that, this, uh, uh, that these classes have, uh, have an omega categorical, it's, it's particular case, have an omega categorical universal object because they, have, they are defined by uh, quantifier uh, free, uh, free formulas, so they have, uh, they have algebraic uh, closure, uh, closure only trivial. Yeah. And uh, so they prove that these classes are uh, have a have an expansion which is which is ultra homogeneous. It somehow in a, with with Hubička we try to reprove this, and uh, we came with uh, expansion which is very explicit. For uh, if you want to prove the Ramsey, you have to prove very explicit. Even if you have a very explicit expansion, there is then a lot of works. But I mean, you certainly need uh, to put a hands on on the on your structure, you have to know them very well. So you, you need explicit expansion. We prove it. It's uh, related to the cuts in the in the in the in these in these graphs, you know. And uh, and uh, and using that, one can one can prove uh, prove this uh, prove this theorem with uh, with uh, Hubička. We we actually hope uh, that we can extend it to the uh, to the infinite. Uh, but it, then it is that uh, that doesn't hold generally. But if you have a, if you have some so-called regular families of infinite graphs, uh, in some sense, then you can. There is a hope that you can, and, and we think that we have it. Uh, we you can extend it uh, to the to the infinite, of f, f infinite. And the another thing, which is which looks completely exotic, and which I mean, which we were working here uh, intensively. I should say to the director of the program that we were working like dogs here. So <laughs> that, uh, and, <laughs> and I almost didn't speak to anybody during the workshop because we were struggling for the following stupid example. I mean, so, so that's, uh, and this is this uh, Mensch example which was already mentioned by Greg. This is a bow tie. I mean, take, a, take the, this bow tie, so the graph which doesn't contain this, I mean, as a weak. Not necessary in your subgraph, so you take forp, forp monomorphism, this, yeah. <coughs> and uh, and uh, so this, these are very special graphs. I mean, so they cannot have a big complete graph, you know, they, they don't have a K5. Complete graph is five points, you know. That, I mean, it's clear. <laughs> they, they have a very special structure. They have some somehow base sets form by they look like something like this i mean so that's a structure theorem which uh, we we need and we somehow uh, rediscovered uh, rehana told me that she as well had, uh, something something like it for this and then then there are some k4s yeah and then there is a graph without triangles which is somehow spanned around and uh, in, in between and there are edges going this way you know and they are difficult guys and uh, so uh, this is very special graph, and uh, and we think that we can prove. I mean, it's uh, it's written, but I mean, it's it's being checked, of course, that we can prove that this uh, form that uh, has has uh, Ramsey Ramsey expansion. So, so expansion. And I have no time to to say any details, and I I, uh, I think you should ask Hubichka for the details. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for attention.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, actually this is not published, but it's written actually. So that's uh, yeah. no, it's not posted on archive, but it is it, it exists. I mean, it uh, it's not too difficult actually. It's uh, it's not too difficult. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's not too too difficult. This is much more complicated. This uh, this uh, uh, it proceeds by the induction on the on the size of the F actually. So. But not on the size of the F, but the size of all these homomorphic images of the F. So you, you take the, you take the, uh, you generate a downset in the partial order of homomorphisms or upset for the by F, and then you do it by induction. Yeah. Another question? Yes. Yeah, I think I should actually at the end.